Recreational marijuana use has been legal in California since 2018. While using the drug is no longer against the law, you're not allowed to get behind the wheel if you are under the influence. A new UC San Diego study evaluates how effective field sobriety tests are at measuring THC exposure and impairment. CBS 8's Rocio Rafe is here with more on the findings. Rocio? Well, road safety is critical as cannabis consumption gains more popularity since it was legalized here in California. But what the findings of the study show is that it remains unclear how useful these field sobriety tests actually are in identifying drivers under the influence of THC. Field sobriety tests may be insufficient in DUI cases involving cannabis. That's according to a recent study by a team of researchers at UCSD. The field sobriety tests are things such as touching your finger to your nose, walking a straight line, going heel to toe, lifting your uh, leg in the air and standing on one leg. The study included 184 adult cannabis users between the ages of 21 and 55. 63 participants were given a placebo cannabis cigarette, while 121 received a THC cannabis cigarette. Trained law enforcement officers then performed field sobriety tests at four different time intervals, roughly around one, two, three, and four hours after smoking. What we did find was that the field sobriety tests are indeed sensitive to THC exposure. In the study, officers determined a significantly higher proportion of participants in the THC group is being impaired based on the field sobriety test compared to the placebo group. So what we found was that 81% of those individuals who had received THC did poorly on the field sobriety test and were called impaired by the officers. But what we also found was that 49% of those people who received the placebo also did poorly on those field sobriety tests and were called impaired. Regardless of whether the participants received THC cigarettes or the placebo, officers estimated 99% of those who failed the test received THC. In this study, the attribution was that if you failed the field sobriety tests or did poorly on them, that you were, must have received the THC, when in fact that was not the case. Professor of Psychiatry at UCSC and co-director of the Center for Medicinal Cannabis Research, Tom Arcott, says while cannabis can be impairing, the effects vary for each individual. He says what's surprising in the study is the high number of people who took the placebo and were labeled impaired. About half the people in the placebo condition were called impaired. So in this case, it was about 50 percent, which is quite high. Now, the study also looked at driving performance, and what they found was that people who did poorly on the driving simulator did worse on the field sobriety tests. Dr. Marcotte says he expects the findings of this study will foster even more research in trying to find ways of identifying impaired drivers. Now, Rocio, we've seen uh, law enforcement agencies do this before with alcohol. Well, they'll bring people in, serve them alcohol, then do a driving simulator. That's so it's right. interesting that they're doing this now with weed and THC. And it's a very similar study as well. Exactly. Are there going to be more of these? Yeah, actually, yes. In fact, the D uh, and Dovely, uh, v, sorry, in California Highway Patrol will soon be looking for volunteers to light up a joint and get behind the wheel. It's a follow-up study to this one that will focus on the impacts that smoking cannabis has on driving abilities. Legalized for use since 2018, but there's still so many different avenues of its use and the ramifications that we're dealing with and learning. Rocio Delafay with a, a critical one of those. Thanks, Rocio. Of course.